How's it going guys? We're now in Season 4 of my Vegas Golden Knights Franchise Mode Series. As you guys can see there, the NHL team has 93 offense, 89 defense, and 91 goaltending. AHL team has 79 offense, 80 defense, and 81 goaltending. I think both teams have a really good shot at the playoffs this year. Uh, if you guys missed the last episode, it was actually our worst season yet. Uh, first season, we won the President's Trophy. Second season, we made the playoffs still. And then last season, we actually finished last in the NHL. So, not really sure what went wrong. We had a pretty decent team, but chemistry started dropping i think after the trade deadline we had a total of like three wins so the team just kind of fell apart i'm hoping this year though we got some new players in it can really turn around uh first line here this andronov guy we actually drafted with our fourth overall pick unfortunately we didn't win any of the three lotteries but uh still got him at fourth overall looks to be a very solid player first line signing there is william nylander actually traded kyle turris for him one for one i think that was a great trade for us he was an 88 so i think he should be able to get back to an 88 sometime this season uh, first line right wing there is Greg Ranko. We could improve first line right wing a bit, but I think Greg Ranko is fine for now. Second line here, we have Sherback, Larkin, and Durant. Also traded for Larkin last season. Uh, he was part of a package. We got him into Kaiser for Tyler Johnson and somebody else. Uh, Johnson's morale was down. I think Larkin's honestly a better player. I think he's the same rating, but younger. Kind of like the perfect second line center. Third line here, we have Perron, Dreisaitl, and Merkley. So pretty solid third line. And then fourth line there, we have Poirier, Gergensen, and Benson. So I really like our forward group this year. I think all 12 forwards have a chance to kind of like increase in rating outside of maybe like Perron. Defense here, top pair, we have DeKaiser and Spurgeon. Second pair there, Lodzegren and Hannafin. Hoping for some big things from them. Uh, third pair there, we have Wrensky and Zaitsev. And then goal, of course, haven't changed since the expansion draft. We have Corpus Salas as a starter with Malcolm Subban backing him up. I think that's honestly a very solid uh, goaltending pair in the NHL. Moving on out of the AHL, you can see we have Matthew Strom, Nolan Patrick, and Hintz on the top line. Really hoping Patrick can have a big year. Uh, 79 overall, his role is a minor scoring forward, so he should do fine in the AHL. Uh, if you guys watch that Matthew Sim, I think him having elite potential, him playing in the AHL shouldn't affect his morale growth or his uh, overall growth, I should say. He's got Strom on his wing, Hintz on the other. We'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, Tulola, Vegdemo, and Kopaka on the second line. Fogel, Velarde, and Kabitsky on the third. So Velarde is now in the AHL for the first time. Same with like Strom and a bunch of these guys. So hopefully a lot of them can grow. Uh, fourth line here are Tukin, Oliver, and Selick. Moving on to the defense now. Top pair there we have Larson and Tulola. So Larson's 82. Hadn't grown last year though playing in the NHL. So maybe in the AHL he'll grow. Uh, if we trade away a guy or anything like that, of course, we can. he'll be the first guy to get called up. Second pair there, Mikola and Sean Day. Sean Day is actually pretty solid. 21 years old, already a 79. So even though he has 70 potential, I think he's going to be like an 82 by the time he's 22. Uh, which would be pretty good for us. And then third pair there, we have Niku and Johansson. So I think the defense is pretty solid for the AHL. And then goalies here, we have Vavalainen as the starter with Hallinan backing him up. Pretty solid goalies, I think, too, for the AHL. So like I was saying, I really do like both teams. I think both teams are very young, um, have a lot of potential, obviously. I'll kind of see what happens on a month-to-month -month basis as we continue the sim. Uh, also, guys, if you're wondering what the owner goals are for this year, three pretty simple goals, I think. We should be able to get all three of them. So the primary goal there is to have 17 sellouts. I think if we're winning games, that should happen. Um, obviously, too, if the ticket prices are reasonable, that'll happen. I think I have prices like turned off, though, for this thing. So hopefully, whoever that is setting them doesn't make them too expensive. Secondary goals there, um, have at least 29 wins this season. I think we should get at least 29 wins. Otherwise, that's not good. And secondary goal there, you can see we already completed, which is uh, upgrading the concessions. So three goals, one of them's already done. The other two, I think, are very doable. Also, the state of the team this year is hopeful. So, of course, if we don't make the playoffs, he's not too upset. But if we do, um, he would be happy. So we'll see what happens. I would love to squeak back into the playoffs. I think we have a good young team, like I was saying. Hopefully, the sim is good to us. Let's get started. So I just finished simming through October. As you guys can see here, not the greatest of records, 3-7. and seven. I was actually pretty optimistic. We went 6-0 and there in the preseason. And obviously preseason doesn't really matter as not a good start here at three and seven, but it's only one month. I think I'm going to wait until the end of November here to really decide if we need to make another big trade and shake up the team. All right, guys, we're now at the end of November here. A bit better of a record with 9, 14, and 1. AHL team there is 9 and 7. Injuries absolutely killed us this year. I think like Nylander got hurt, Sherback, Merkley, uh, Perron, DeKaiser, Zaitsev. Like I swear almost half the team got injured. Uh, it was absolutely ridiculous. We had to keep calling up AHL guys and sending them back down. They were all like kind of like a week-long injuries, just kind of annoying stuff like that. Uh, Nolan Patrick's up right now on the team. Um, I'm not exactly sure who all else is. You can see Larkin's now injured for six days. I didn't even notice that one. Uh, Nylander went down for a bit, but he's now back. He's an 89 now too. Um, Nolan Patrick, I keep putting on the first line, and it's really annoying when like injuries keep happening. You just keep pressing best lines. So really wish the assistant coach would stop doing that and putting him on the uh, fourth line, but we're just look at the team. Uh, I also want Dreisaitl there on the second, Andronov on the first. So something like that, uh, obviously when Larkin's back, um, who will get scratched? Probably Patrick. 
sent back down the AHL. Um, looks like the defense are actually all healthy right now. So yeah, just Larkin's injured. This Fogel guy who got called up, I can send him back down to the AHL. But yeah, like injuries were just absolutely killing us last month. I'm not sure if I can show you guys all the people that were injured. I can't, so I can only show you who's injured right now. But yeah, just trust me on that one. Um, so I think I'm still going to hold off on making any moves. As like I said, the team was so injured, um, you know, I don't really know what's going on there. Um, so we'll send him down. We'll uh, edit lines there in the AHL. We'll sim December. If December it's still not looking good, then I think we're going to have to make a trade, shake the team up. Another thing, guys, I was just looking at Nolan Patrick. They have him listed as a power forward center. But as you can see here, uh, his faceoff stat's 64, so he's not that great at the faceoff circle. Also, uh, power forwards would probably be really good, like, physical and maybe even defensive. Two-star defense, so, I mean, he's definitely not a two-way forward. Um, and, I mean, I really don't think he's a power forward either, three-and-a-half-star physical. I think what I'm going to do is actually go change his position and his player type, and hopefully that'll help him grow, especially if we keep him in the NHL, have him playing on a top line like that. I mean, I really don't want him to be a bust again. Um, I'm probably going to make him a right winger as he's right-handed, so that'll probably be the best bet to go. And then I'm going to make him a sniper opposed to a power forward as he has a really good skating stat. Um, he also had a pretty solid shot, I think. So take one last look at him here, make sure I get it right. Um, I don't even see him here. Where is he? So Nolan Patrick, five-star skating, four-star shooting, four-star puck skills. I think, yeah, he definitely could be a sniper. And like I said, his face-offs just are not there. Uh, so I'm probably going to make him a right winger. Um, as at least he's on his strong side that way. So we'll just go switch that up really quick here. So we'll try making him a sniper and we'll make him a right winger. And we'll see if this makes him better. If not, I think it's better than just leaving him as he was. So we're now at the end of December, guys. We still have a losing record here with 13, 22, and 3. Again, this month, just a bunch of injuries throughout. I don't know what it is. HL team, though, is looking pretty good. 16, 10, and 2. So we'll take a look here and see where we are in the division. Obviously, I'm pretty sure we're last. Yeah, 7th place there, 29 points. Not too far out of it, though. Um, San Jose's at 5th, 35, 42 points to catch Anaheim. So, I mean, if we can start turning it around quick, we still have a chance, but... I think I'm definitely going to have to make a move here and shake this team up. So let's take a look at the lines, guys. And I think the thing we need most is a number one defenseman. It's something we've never had um, from the expansion draft onwards. I think our highest rated defenseman ever was like an 85. So I'm trying to trade for Provorov right now. A really good young defense. And you'll see he's also 85 right now, but he's 22, medium league potential. I think he can become our number one defenseman. Obviously, I don't think we're going to win the Stanley Cup anytime soon, like this year or anything. So I think it's a solid trade to make couple players there just for the roster spots. Trading Zaitsev will basically be pushed out by Provorov. Um, Merkley, good player, but he doesn't really have a spot in the team. Like our top four centers are Nylander, Lurkin, Dreisettle, Gergensen. Um, he's playing wing right now. He's not going to crack one of those four center spots. We have a lot of center depth in the AHL. So I think if he brings us back Provorov, it's worth it. Uh, this AHL prospect there, Toronto second round pick, and then um, AHL potential prospect in Popov. So the value is definitely on our side. Looks to be about double. We'll see what Philly says. I think this will definitely help us out now as well as in the future. Here we go. Trade rejected. So let's see if we can maybe add a couple pieces to make it go through. So I made one minor change here, guys. I traded out Popov for this Malakov guy. He's got top nine for potential, so a bit more potential. He's got a bit more value. He's a center, though. So like I said, we have a lot of center depth. We'll see if that can kind of push it over the edge. The value's on our side big time. Here we go. Uh, we have to call it Nolan Patrick, so the trade went through. There we go. I think that's huge. All right, guys. So after that trade, here's like the lines. First line's the same with Andronov, Nylander, Greg Ranko. Second line's Patrick, Larkin, and Duran. So I'm really hoping playing with Duran, Larkin can make Patrick's rating finally go up. Uh, third line there, Perron, Dry, Settle, Sherback. And fourth line, Poirier, Gergensen, and Benson. On D, of course, we now have Provorov. So DeKaiser, Spurgeon, Hannafin, Provorov, Larson, Lodjegren. Uh, Larson will get sent back down to the AHL. If he can, I, he might actually have to go through waivers. Um, as right now, Wierenski is scratched for, with an injury. Uh, George is just there, like I said um, last episode. He's just there for the salary. If we do have any injuries on D, sometimes he comes in, but hardly ever. So let's look at the lines. We'll see if uh, this team can start winning some games. All right, guys, we're just about the All-Star game here, and Malcolm Subban just got injured. I was looking at it. Like, I've been sitting for two weeks now, I think, um, in January, and we've had three injuries. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, if it's because, like, our team is playing bad or something, but... Um, the injuries have just gotten ridiculous. Like it's constant injuries. Uh, it's so annoying having to deal with because you constantly have to like fix the lines and everything. And a lot of times too, like it's not that long of injuries, but it's just so annoying. So as you can see here, in a couple days we're at the All Star break, not a great record. It's 17 and 28. Fan happiness there is 52. Like oh my gosh, just so many injuries constantly. Uh, locker room chemistry there is 70. So HL team still doing pretty decent. 18, 13, and five. NHL team, though, looks to be another rough season. Good thing is, of course, we have a lot of young players. Hopefully, they can grow over this year. 
They're getting a lot of ice time and can really be a much better team next season. Currently have 38 points, which is last in our division. We'll take a look and see where we are in the entire NHL. Jonathan Duran there looks to be leading the team in points. So 38 points. Um, we're actually one point behind LA, so that's not terrible. Um, LA is getting a lot older though, so we should have like passed them by now probably. The entire NHL will take a look here and see where we're at. Hopefully not last. And we are last tied of Colorado. LA is one above us. Then the Jets are two above us. So not looking good. Um, obviously, if we aren't going to make the playoffs, I'd rather finish lower near the bottom, have a better shot at top pick. But it still is a bit upsetting. So Duran there, 33 points. Nylander is 31. He's an 89 now, so he's still crushing it. Um, Andronov's 29 his rookie season. That's not too bad. Uh, Greg Ranko there, 27. Dreisel, 25. Lodrigan's got 20. I think he went down a rating from 84 to 83. I don't know why. He's had a pretty good season so far. Provorov's got 20. Uh, I think he's also injured right now. Lurkin at 20. Benson at 18. The rest of the guys just kind of chipping in there. Let's see how Nolan Patrick's done. Uh, 38 games, 5 points. I have no idea what's wrong with him. Um, usually I play him on like the second or third line. Uh, I think the assistant coach always puts him on the fourth line, so I try and correct that as much as I can. But I don't know what's like... Nolan Patrick, I think, just might be jinxed for me. Wrenski, I think, has been injured for like two months now, so that's kind of rough. We'll take a look now at the AHL team and see how uh, they're looking for points. Hintz is leading point getter over there with uh, 24. Tulola, 21. Vegemo, 19. Vlardy, 19. Strom's got 17. So I think Strom should be doing better than that. First line left wing, but not quite happening. Not really a lot going on there in the AHL. Like, we are not getting very many points, but the record's okay, so I won't, uh, you know, be upset about that. I forgot to check the NHL goalies, so we'll do that after I check the AHL goalies here. Uh, Vava Linen's got a 1.77 goals against. That's pretty solid there with a .935 save percentage. Let's see, Corpy Salo here. 2.73 goals against, .9 save percentage. That's okay. Subban there, 3.63, .875. Not very good. So we'll see what happens here in the second half of the season. Um, I don't know what it is. Just I think back-to-back -back bad years was looking like. Probably those first two years were just fluke years. Uh, or maybe because we had like veteran players, they were... I don't know, performing better. We'll see what happens here. I don't mind, though, getting another high draft pick. It'll set, up us, set us up better for the future. So now the end of February, we're at the trade deadline here. We have a record of 24, 34, and 4. So uh, we are not making the playoffs, I don't think, for the second straight year, which kind of sucks, like I said. But we'll see what kind of moves we can make here at the deadline. I'm not sure if we have any players that only have one year left. I'm not going to resign, but if we do, we'll probably try and trade them for whatever picks we can get. Other than that, though, uh, not going to make any big changes. Most of my young players I want to keep and see how they grow over the summer. So right here, guys, we're going to trade Perron to the Islanders for their second round pick in this year's draft results. Olin, he's a bomb six forward prospect. They want to trade, though. So they should go through. They want Perron. They don't want those two things. Here we go. Uh, we have to call it Vegemo, so trade went through. Also, guys, I don't think I mentioned, but Perron only had one year left. I wasn't going to re-sign him, so that's why I made the trade. Right here, guys, we're trying one other trade at the deadline, just a small trade, trading the two worst prospects I have, uh, both HL potential. Bernard, we got back in a trade, I believe. And Popov here, we drafted, trying to get a fourth and a fifth from the Flames. So I'm not sure if they'll do this, but if they do, helps us out in this draft, try and get some, you know, late round steals. Here we go. Uh, trade accepted. So that was actually really good. Right here, guys, trying to get one last trade with the Vancouver Canucks, trading Spurgeon to them for a second, a third, and a fourth round pick. The other guy is just there for the uh, roster spot. He has one year left on his deal. I'm hoping that he might just end up in free agency, like Vancouver doesn't re sign him. But even if they do, uh, that's $5 million more million we have in free agency to like go and try and get the best defenseman again. And we have so much cap space. like We can overpay so much that I think I might just have to do it to finally get a good player on our team. Um, obviously, too, we have like good defensemen on our team, like uh, at least for right now. Like Jacob Larson scratch, so he can fill in a Spurgeon spot for now. So I think it'll do good. Um, like I was saying, we can't quite get a first, so we're going to try and get as many other picks as I can here. Uh, we'll see what Vancouver says. Trade accepted. So uh, that's a lot of picks for us there. I might actually just uh, flip the guy we just got and add another pick. And as you can see, we have a ton of picks in this year's draft. So this is definitely the last trade of the deadline. I'm trying to trade the HL player we just got along with our sixth round pick for Anaheim's fourth round pick. I think they'll do this. Um, we'll see what they say here. Uh, yeah, trade accepted. So I'll show you guys exactly all the picks we have now. Uh, one first, three seconds, a third, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, fourth round picks, and two fifth round picks. So hopefully we can hit with at least a few of those fourth round picks. Basically like all we have to hope for, but so many draft picks there. Uh, the future should be bright. So now at the end of the season, guys, we finished with a record of 31, 46, and 5. So we did get more wins than he wanted for that owner goal. Uh, HL team there, 33, 21, and 9. Still a very rough season. Fan happiness is at 42. We have seven things we need to upgrade and maintain, but 
Um, we just don't have enough money to do it. And what sucks too is the fact that I have it on auto finance. I can't change it to like put more money into that and less money into marketing. So kind of just stuck there. Seventh place in the Pacific with 67 points. Uh, and I'm there with 104. So we are quite behind the rest of the crowd. Definitely gonna have to get a big summer here, some big free agent signings, and have a lot of growth from some young players to really uh, turn it around next year. So actually only finished two points behind San Jose, assuming they don't win their last game. Uh, we'll see where we are in the entire league. Um, obviously, we'll definitely be uh, having a chance here at the first overall pick again. We are last place, uh, and San Jose can't get negative points. So we have the most odd to get the first overall pick again, so let's we'll see what happens there. It's so weird how like our two worst seasons are season three and four, and our best season so far was season one. Like It's just so strange. Uh, Nylander here finished the most points on the team, 54 points. Not, I mean, it's decent, but you'd think 89 overall, he'd put up like at least 65 or something. Duran there at 51, Andronov 47, not too bad for his rookie year. Um, I think he actually went down one overall. Maybe it was just because I think he might have got injured or something. Greg Rankle there, 42, Larkin 35. Larkin's down to an 84. Um, he's second line forward role, playing second line uh, center, so I don't know what's wrong there. I'm not going to trade him, though. I'm just going to hope it bounces back. Uh, the rest of the guys here with like 30 points. Benson had actually a pretty decent year. Um, so overall, like we didn't do too good. Not a lot of production there. Really got to hope, like I said, some big free agent signings, a good draft, um, some growth. Like we need a definite quick turnaround. I don't want to keep losing here. Corpy Salo, 2.64 against. Isn't the greatest. Decent save percentage. Malcolm Subban, almost four goals a game he played. That is not good. Um, we'll take a look at the AHL team here. I guess we'll start off with the goalies. Uh, Vave line in there, 1.97. So that's pretty good. Pretty good save percentage as well. Take a look at the uh, leading scores here in the AHL. So Hintz has 45 points, Vegetimo 37, Flaherty there 36. I think he's going to start growing a lot. Uh, Strom also 36, he's a 77 now. Tulola 34, Oliver 30. So AHL team's looking pretty good. I'm actually going to send Nolan Patrick down to the AHL to help them with the AHL playoffs. And maybe they'll help him with his growth as well. So we'll see what happens here and get on with the AHL playoffs and just hope for the best. So the owner goals just popped up and apparently the owner changed his goals from 29 wins to 35 so he failed them. I don't kind of stupid how he changed them and then uh, 17 sellouts we didn't get as we were sucking all year so didn't expect to get that one. We should have got two or three. Kind of got screwed there. All right guys so I accidentally just started simming the AHL playoffs as you can see there. Lost the first one in OT then we won the next three. Uh, one of them in OT the other two in regulation so a pretty good start there. Three and one the best of five series of course start off the first round. Uh, second round here going up against the Chicago Wolves, hoping for some uh, more success. I really got to make it up for the uh, NHL season as it was pretty poor. Um, Nolan Patrick, uh, morale gain there, so that's good to see. Um, that's not good. That's our starting goaltender there. Vavalainen is injured. Hopefully it's just like a couple day injury. Uh, won the first game there, won the second, so good start here against the Wolves. Win the third, and we win the fourth. So we actually sweep them there. Moving on now to the conference final. Uh, HL team is actually kind of surprising me. So going up against the San Diego Gulls now, I think they've won a Calder in one of this year's Sims. Um, let's just Sim to the end here. If we do make it to the Calder final, I'll probably Sim that game by game. But um, a lot of the players I don't know other than like Patrick, Strom, and like a couple others. So uh, scouting assignment, we can fix this real quick. I've pretty much been everywhere this year. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've done Russian D-men yet. Only like whatever. We can do that for like the rest of the year. Who cares? I've pretty much gone everywhere else. Uh, so 2-2, two, 3-2 two, three, two now, 3-3 three, three, going to Game 7, and we win that one in Game 7. There we go. Uh, that was a huge win. So Calder Cup Final here. This could really make up for our NHL season. Hartford Wolfpack. It's kind of crazy. Our HL team's not even as good this year as it's been in the past. Like, it's all 70s on our team. I think maybe Patrick's an 80, and maybe Vegdemo's an 80. So we got, like, two 80s, but the rest of the team's 70s. Um, we'll send these games here, period by period. Uh, just kind of interested to see, you know, how the AHL team does. So down one nothing here, down 2 nothing. Oliver scores there. We lose that one 2-1. Maybe I should have just kept simming game by game. Maybe this is bad luck, but we'll keep it going here. So down 2-1. We're actually away. Um, so maybe if we can come back home, if we get a, at least one win here, maybe make it 3-1 if we get back-to-back -back wins at home. So here we go. Second period, first period. Velarde gets a goal. Uh, our 2 king gets one. Hishier gets one. Vegemo there gets another. So big 3-1 win there. Tie the series up. Like I was saying, we're heading home now. Uh, would be awesome if we can, you know, get back-to-back -back wins here, make it a 3-1 series. Just going to go best lines there on that injury. Uh, Nolan Patrick gained morale again. He's gained morale like three times. Maybe he's even an 81 now, uh, playing some meaningful AHL playoff games. Maybe that's good for his rating. Here we go. First period. Uh, Sean Day gets one. Uh, there we go. Oliver gets two. This is like the fourth-line career AHLer. So it's a 3-2 game now. Uh, Buchnevich got one for them. 
third period, wow, Vlardy, Mikola, Kabitsky, a big third period for us, so it's a 6-2 win. That is awesome to see. So moving on now to game four, I believe. Uh, can make this a 3-1 series at home, like I was saying before. Uh, Tulolo's back, so that's a good sign too. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it done. Would be awesome. I mean, coming off a 6-2 win, boys should be pumped up. Here we go. First period, uh, Vegemo, Artukin. Second period, Salik. So 3-1. And there we go. Oliver, pull out the 4-3 win. Morrison here. Almost spoiled it, but not quite. So that is awesome. Uh, just need one more win here. Three games to go. I think we can get it done. Uh, Vlardi there is injured. That definitely hurts. Uh, Vlardi's been playing really good for us, but I'm sure we can make up for it. We got a good amount of depth on the team. So let's go here. Let's see if we can win it. Game five, first period, nothing. Second period, whoa, big second period. Uh, Nolan Patrick gets one, Johansson. We're down 4 2, though. Third period, no scores. So 3 2 series now. We got to win one of these next two. We'd love to win this next game, game six. At home, that'd be pretty good uh, for the fans, like I've been saying. Just kind of make up for how bad the NHL team's been. AHL playoffs are going on. We haven't even have 50% of our tickets sold yet. That is not good. Um, I don't think I control any of that, though. Uh, I, like I said, I made it auto finances. Obviously, we had a really bad season, so it kind of does make sense. Definitely need to win games next season, bring the fans back. Also, Vlardy's back for this game you might have seen, so that's huge. Here we go. Game six, first period. No scores. Second period, nothing. All right, so let's resume here the third period. We'll see, uh, skip the sim there or make it eight times. Vegemo gets one. All right, so one nothing lead here. About 15 minutes to go now. We got a lot more shots than them, 28 to 18. About half the period. Oh, wow, Kovacs gets one, ties it up. Half the period to go still. Is he going to go to OT or are we going to get a late-minute heroic? Vlardy there gets a late goal. About four and a half, three and a half. Um, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I, wa I wanted to... Uh, Crap, I wanted to uh, like intervene or whatever so we could see the Calder celebration, but that's okay. Velarde there, comes back off an injury, gets the game winner with five and a half minutes to go. Uh, that is awesome. So Calder Cup there belongs to our AHL team. Uh, so it's a good sign. I mean, our NHL team might have finished last, but the AHL team finished first. So a sign of things to come. Hopefully we can have some good lottery results here. Um, at least, you know, get one of the top three picks, not lose out every single time. Uh, Calgary Flames, they're actually the Stanley Cup champions. And as you guys can see, we actually did win the second pick. So San Jose there with the first overall. We get the second. Vancouver with the third via Philly. So that's definitely got to hurt for Philadelphia. But second overall pick, I can live with that. Um, hopefully there's a very good player available. Obviously this deep into the uh, franchise mode, it's all created players. So just got to hope. I'll take a look here at the retired players. Uh, nobody on our team. Or wait, never mind. Josh Georges. Uh, he played like maybe 10 games all year for us. Let's see uh, other retired players here. Wasn't going to sign Georges either way. We just made that one trade for him. Uh, so we'd be over the salary cap. Eric Stahl's retiring. Camel Larry, Patrick Sharp, Hartnell, Palmanville, Duncan Keith. That's a big retirement. Vermette, Lupul, Zajac, Weidman. Let's see. Matt Molson, Brooks Likes, uh, Steve Ott there. So, I mean, some, some pretty recognizable names. Really no all-stars that I can see, though. Uh, let's check goalies here and see if any big-time goalies retired. Um, Niemi there, Budai, Montoya. So, yeah, really... Niemi is the number one goalie. He doesn't even have 500 games played. So really no no crazy retirements this year. So now at the draft, guys. Zayon Zay with the first overall pick there. Took this Yokola guy, I think is how you'd say his name. High elite potential there. Uh, left wing to a forward. So that's a good pick. I would love to get a high elite potential guy. That'd probably be the best potential on our team. Let's see here. The four top five players that are left. There's a low HL toxics forward there for Canadian right winger. Two defensemen. Both are considered to have high top 4D. So that's probably what they are. And then that center there has HL bomb six medium. So not going to take the center. We have so much center depth. It's either going to be one of these defensemen or the right winger. Um, so the right winger could be he's definitely a lot better than that. He's projected to go top five. Or we could take a defenseman. And this could be like our franchise defense. We did just trade for Provorov though. This is a tough pick nevertheless. Um, I see. I don't know. The top four D. I think like they're probably, they probably are just top four D, which is solid. But I mean, it's not great. They could be elite too. They really could be elite. Um, let's take a look here at all three guys and kind of see if we can get anything from the stats. So three and a half throughout for this guy. He's got four and a half, though, defense. Um, that's pretty solid. Let's see this Olas guy. Um, he's got four. Oh, wow, five-star skating, five-star puck skills, uh, four-star shooting, four-star defense. This guy looks like a really offensive defenseman, kind of like an Eric Carlson there. One and a half-star physical, four and a half-star senses. That's kind of nuts. And then this Hula guy here. They really don't know what's going on with this guy. Um, 
I really like this old ass guy. I'm going to go with him. Please be an elite potential defenseman. Medium elite. There we go. I like that pick. So as it turns out, guys, it was actually really good. We drafted this old ass guy. The other defenseman there was also medium elite potential, but I think ours is like really offensive. So hopefully he can put a bunch of points up for us. Like I said, be kind of like the next Carlson. I believe this one was the Swedish one. Um, the Hula guy, though, high top nine forward. So we definitely dodged a bullet there. Um, the other top five guy was also uh, top nine forward. So one of the defensemen was the way to go. I think he got the better of the two. Just going to quickly go through the first round there. There's a low elite uh, defenseman. See if there's any other elite potential guys. Um, I'm not seeing any, though. So no AHL guys, at least in the first round, which is good, unlike a couple of years ago. So second round here, we traded our pick. Uh, it must have been to Detroit. They got a medium top nine forward there. Uh, we do have, I think, three second round picks, though. So we should be able to get some solid prospects here. First pick is at number 19. Already have a defenseman, but I'm not really going to draft by uh, position. and draft by basically what's the best available. High top nine forwards, pretty good. We also have an exact top six D. Um, let's see here if we sort by exact um, top six D. So I think we got to go with the top nine Russian here. Let's see. Maybe he's even better. Maybe he's like a top six. Low top six. I think that's a pretty solid second round pick. And we actually have pick number 21 next, which is like two picks later. So Dallas gets a pick there. They get a low top nine. We also have pick number 22. So we draft three to four picks here. Um, let's see what else is available. I think I might take that top 6D if he's still here. He is still there. So let's take him for the safe pick. And then I think we're going to take a risky one for the next one. Low top 6D, so that could have been a bit better. Um, this third second round pick, I'd like to kind of just go all out here. Um, high HL. Let's see. All these guys are bomb 6. The exact there, the bomb 6 forwards you can get in later rounds. So let's just go by projected here and really just hope. This unknown defenseman I kind of want to take. Um... All that's AHL, bomb six. Let's let's go for it. Peros. Actually, should we check goalies? Let's just see if there's any solid goalies available. Um, on Yes, there's nothing there. It's all like fringe starter and stuff. So we're going to take that unknown defenseman. Hope he's at least like, um, I don't know, at least a top six. And medium top six. That's pretty good. Third round pick now. We have pick number 22. We traded our third round pick, but we still have, I think, two third round picks. We actually, this might be the only third round pick we have. Um, let's see, bomb six forward there, Canadian, power forward, third slash fourth, I kind of, I think I might take that, seems like the fine third round pick, low top nine, even better. So first pick now in the fourth round, I think we have six fourth round picks, a ridiculous amount of fourth round picks, I'll make the safe pick here, take this Russian winger, uh, bomb six forward, uh, low bomb six forward, so that's okay, like I said, I think you have six of these picks, so um, we can definitely take some safe ones, then we can just, you know, Swing for the fences and try and get somebody really good. Um, let's see. Uh, AHL top 2D here. He could be actually like top 60. Uh, low 70. So, I mean, not quite, but he was better than AHL at least. Um, let's see our next fourth round pick. Not till pick number 22. Would love to get like a top 9 forward or like a top 60 right here. Um, completely unknown guy from Poland. No one knows about him. Maybe he's a beast. Let's see. Um, medium 70. So, that's okay. Obviously, it could be worse if he was an AHL guy. Uh, pick number 27 now. So medium bomb six forwards went. Could have used some of those. That's all right. Um, this goalie here from Belarus. I don't know. I think we have a good enough uh, goalie prospects. Uh, this finished guy, fourth slash fifth. This center here. We already have lost centers. Let's take this defenseman here. Or actually, AHL top 2D. They could be... Don't want the enforcer, though. Let's take the finished guy. And let's see how he is. Low seventh D again. I think we have one more fourth round pick. We do number pick number 30, Volchenkov. I'm not sure if that was the goalie I was looking at, but he had medium fringe starter potential. That's pretty solid for a fourth round. Um, yeah, that was the goalie too. He's not showing up here, so probably should have taken him. That's okay though. Um, let's see, looking at everything here. Sorting by potential, it's just all AHL, exact. There's a bomb six forward available. Riley, I'm gonna take him, just make sure we get him. Hopefully it's like medium bomb six. Uh, let's see, it's gonna bring us all the way to the fifth round and low bomb six so i guess we'll take it next year we have our number one pick in the fifth round i think we have one other fifth round pick and those are all our picks so we gotta make them count here um uh, let's see it's it's a crapshoot basically um geez this guy is medium ahl bomb six he could be better let's go for him varlamov there low bomb six not too bad so i think this next pick is our last pick in the draft um, let's see what's available. Hopefully get something pretty good. So far, I think we've had a pretty good draft. It's the last pick in the draft. Oh, this must be the, of course, because, yeah, we traded for Calgary's fourth and fifth and then won the cup. All right, so here we go. Um, 
fifth slash sixth line center. Let's, uh, or we want Walker there. He has some league interest. Let's go with Walker here. Last pick of the draft. Uh, let's see how good he was. I don't think we have a sixth round pick. HL top 2D. So I think that was our last pick, and that was our only uh, AHL pick. So not too bad. I think we got a lot of good prospects. Our first pick there, the defense, and I'm hoping can really turn out into a good player, and everyone else can hopefully just kind of fill in eventually as the years go on, whether it be like a third line guy, fourth line guy, second pair defense, and whatever it is. Uh, I like this draft. I think it'll really help us in the future. So we're at the resign phase now, guys. I don't think I've ever seen this. Our team cap hits 39 million. Our cap space is more than our cap hit. We have 43.2 million in cap space. A ridiculous amount of cap space we can just overpay whatever free agent we want we can literally double them even if we just do it for a year that way they're kind of like on our team so then we can get them for cheaper when it's like the resign phase that they've been on our team something i honestly might do we have so much money obviously we do have to resign a bunch of guys but we are still gonna have a lot of money left over larkin right now is an 83 we knew he was an 87 but his morale went down of course uh three and a half million for four years i'm willing to do that he should jump up to at least like an 86 uh vegetable here 24 80 He's kind of just like an AHL guy still. We'll see if he can get better. Same goes for Hens. Hasn't quite uh, cracked the NHL team, but a good AHL player. Um, this dude here, 22-69. We'll give him a one year. Actually, do we even want him? I might not. Depends like what how you know how many other contracts we have. Um, that's kind of like a really important thing now is like what players we're giving contracts to as we have so many good young players. Um, wingers, they're all locked up. Uh, looks like Andronov and Durand both dropped one. That's probably just because... We had such a bad season. Matthew Strom's up a bit, though. Um, none of those guys need to be signed. Right wing's here. Greg Ranko needs a new deal. Been playing first line right wing for us. He's more like a second line right wing. Three years. We'll give him like four and a half. I think he's earned that. Sherback's still on a $3 million deal. Poirier there is locked up. Patrick's an 81 now, so not too bad. Zirkel's 23.76. Uh, I think I'm going to let him go. I think we could find better in free agency. Carlson, 23.73. And again, He's not going to get that much better. Um, let's see, 23, 71, same kind of thing. Like, they're 23 and they're not even cracked 75. Not worth it. Uh, 21, 68, uh, maybe we'll keep him. Depends how many contracts we have. Uh, defense here, we got DeKaiser, Hannafin. Provorov needs a new deal. 84 right now, We of course, he could get better. So four years, um, let's see, five years, it really goes up. Never goes higher, though, than like eight, four point eight. So... Maybe, you know, he can play better than it's showing right now. He didn't gain any overall, playing a lot of minutes. Uh, we'll give him like 3.25 there for four years. Uh, Lilligren needs a new deal. So this, of course, will be his bridge deal. First thing from the rookie deal. 1.775 for three years. That's pretty fair. Um, doesn't look like he's going to get good according to this. Like, just under 3 million, eight years later. He should get a lot better than that. Um, let's sign him to like a six-year, $2.2 million deal. I think he'd do that. And I, you know, I just got to hope, I guess, he gets a lot better. He has medium league potential. And if he's, you know, even gets to like an 85 at 2.2 million, that's a steal. Uh, Larson here, kind of like an AHL, NHL fringe guy. Obviously, you don't want to lose him, though. So we'll lock him up 1.75 for three years. Uh, Mikola here, 24.79. He's a good AHL defenseman. Can get called up if we need him to. Uh, same goes for Niku. We'll give him that. Uh, Tulola, same kind of deal. 24.79. We've only got a couple years left here to get into the low 80s. Olas there, 18, 78 overall. It's our first overall pick, or second overall pick, first round pick. Uh, he'll be in the AHL, I think, right off the bat. Let's see if anyone else needs a new deal. Uh, that is it for the defenseman. Looking at the goalies now, Corby Sal needs a new deal. He's going to get paid big time, 89 overall. Yeah, he wants $9 million. Uh, let's see. So he's 26. Um, let's see. This is crazy. Um... Three years, four years is at 9.3. That's so he's he's 30. Unbelievable. Let's try 9 million for four years. It's crazy how much like these good goalies want. Good thing we have the cap space to afford them. That's like the one thing we have as a goalie. We just try, need to try and build a team around him now. Where it's usually like a good team where we have to try and find a good goalie. Have exactly the opposite problem here. Uh, Viva Line is still 79, so he's still a solid HL starter. I'm um, hoping he can you know keep continue to grow um hl backup sign so that's it we'll see how much cap space we have after all those signings should still have a ton of money as you guys can see here larkin accepted the offer same with provorov corpy salo greg Ranko, olas vegdemo larson probably everybody lilligran tulola hence 
Niku, Vavilon, and Mikola. So I think that was everybody. I'll double check and also see how much money we have left here for free agency. So everyone accepted our contracts, guys. And I was actually looking through. We have 16 unsigned prospects, which is insane. Obviously, we don't even have enough contract spots to like sign them all. So we'll be using a bunch of them in trades. Uh, I just gave this Gregor guy an offer. We do have seven spots open, so I can afford to give him one. Um, also, you, as you can see there, we have 22 million in cap space. So like I was saying, a ton of money to spend. We're just going to overpay for everybody, but hopefully it's worth it. So at the free agency period now, guys, we'll click it here, see who's available. Hopefully there's some like big names that we can just pay a ton of money to get on our team. Travis Hamannick there, that's a big defense we could definitely use. Um, he's kind of the guy we are looking for, 88 overall. He only wants $6 million. He is about to get paid by us. Same for Carl Alsner. I wouldn't mind just giving him a big contract too. He's 31, so he's not too old. Uh, Hornfist there, I could even give him a contract. Uh, Little, I think we're probably good at center, but depends on what Larkin's looking like. Tyler Johnson's available now. He was on our team. Wouldn't mind bringing him back. Um, Eakins there, Smith, Sheehan. So a good amount of players there. And like I said, we have $22 million to spend. So uh, might as well just you know goal out here and try to get some players, whether we have to pay a lot extra. Doesn't really matter. Just kind of curious here for goalies. If there's a decent backup available. I might consider trading Subban. Uh, Morazic's actually up here. Uh, Bernier, Markstrom. Uh, 84s don't even want that much. So I'm wondering if we could get something for Subban. Uh, Fukali there. 25, 84. Don't really want to pay him 5 million though. So that's obviously an option. I'm not sure if we'll do it or not. Uh, I think we're going to first try and make an offer on both Alsner and on Hamannick. Uh, we'll see what it's going to take. Like I was saying, guys, I'm going to make both these guys an offer. Hamnick's 29, wants four years. He's 88 overall. Um, so four years until he's 33. He shouldn't start to regress till then. Um, so I don't mind paying him like a lot more money to play for us. We have 22 million, you have to remember. So we can give him like seven and a half there for four years. Hopefully that's enough extra money. Um, Olsner here, 31, wants three years, 5.3. So I could do three years. Maybe we give him like 6.5. Again, just try and boost this defense. Um, so seven and a half, six or seven and a half and six and a half. Uh, we're looking at 14 million there. Um, so we still have eight million left to spend. Uh, Horn Chris at 33 is a bit old for me. Same with Brian Little at 32. Tyler Johnson though we could bring back on the team. Push Larkin down to the third line center rule. I don't know if I like that. Um, we could move Larkin to the wing though or Tyler Johnson. So that's obviously an option if we do sign him. Um, Eakins here. 87 overall, third line center. He's kind of like the perfect third line center, honestly. Um, he's going to cost a lot of money, though. And then Dreisaitl would have to move to the wing as well. Um, so a lot of options here. Um, let's see. I just noticed, too, Tyler Johnson's considered a first line forward. Um, and Eakins is a third line, even though they're both 87. So I think I'm actually going to go after Johnson and try and make him a right winger. Play him on the first line there between uh, Nylander and either Durant or the uh, rookie we drafted. So let's see if we can bring him back to the team. He wants 6.8, so we're gonna have to pay him like 8 million. He's 29. What if we do uh, 8 million for four years? Maybe that'll bring him back. So that's actually all of our money. Uh, we'll see if we can land even one of these guys. That would be better than before. I don't think we've ever landed a big name free agent. Paying him a lot, and we'll see what they say. Also, guys, I almost forgot to check the uh, high potential two way players. So there's this chance guy here, 21, 75 overall. Three teams interested, so we gotta overpay them all. Hopefully, because we're bad, he'll think he gets ice time with us. Um, 2376 Zirkles, we let him go. Ruay here is 25. Tarasov, 2371. I think he might have been on our team too, I'm not sure. Uh, two guys here at top six, 2375, 2376. Those aren't too bad. I'm going to try and sign both these guys as well, especially if we can get them for like kind of cheap, give 850k to both of them. Uh, that Florida guy I should have overpaid, I didn't realize he was an RFA. This guy's also an RFA, so we'll see if maybe Columbus doesn't want to match the uh, max deal there. Um, so those are the offers we're going to make for now, and uh, we'll see what people say. As you guys can see here, the Florida guy rejected, decided to stay with Florida, so that kind of makes sense. Um, Vaino here accepted our offer, but Columbus has a chance to match. Uh, the center there with top 9-4 potential accepted. That's a big uh, big steal for us. He was the like highest potential two-way free agent. We'll see here about Hamannick, Alsner, and Johnson as well. Um, let's see, Columbus Blue Jackets have chosen uh, to match your offer. That's all right. Um, Travis Hamnick accepted. I seen a thing about uh, you know being scared to be on his new team, so that's huge. Finally, have a number one defenseman, 88 overall. That is going to be a huge boost to our team. I think I've said that twice now. Tyler Johnson also accepted. He's coming back to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And Carl Halsner accepted. That's crazy. So we overpaid for all of them, but we finally got some free agents to come to this team. Um, so I'm gonna go check how much money we have. I think that's all the money we have. If we do have a bit extra, 
Um, might as well spend it. We haven't spent to the cap like this entire time. Uh, so we have 2.4 million here. Um, we'll see where we need some depth. If we need to sign like a third line wing or something, I'll do that. Otherwise, probably just try and add a couple more uh, solid potential young players. So if you guys decided why not bring back uh, Zirkles onto the team, I think we have a roster spot for him, 2376. Um, if we do have the roster spot, might as well just add him back. So right now, guys, I'm actually going to give Oscar Dansk an offer to be our backup goalie. Subban went from an 84 to an 81 as his morale's down, and he had a really bad year last year. So uh, I'm actually going to be getting both of Columbus's like young goalies. So um, 1.775 is what he wants. We can give him like $2 million for one year, probably get him cheaper next year. Uh, we have to give a third-round pick for a backup goalie, though. I don't know about that. Um, let's see. What if we give him less money? How much are we giving up here? We still give up a third round pick. Still a third round pick. So that is a tough pill to swallow, as I don't really want to do that. Andrew Hammond's available. He's 32, 82 overall. Could get him for one year, and then next year get a different backup goalie. I think that might be the play. Um, he's a bit more expensive, but we don't have to give anything up. So uh, let's do that. Give him $2 million here for one year. Uh, Corby Sal is going to be playing most of the games anyway. Uh, veteran backup. We can trade Subban for whatever we can get. And as you guys can see here, Hammond accepted our offer, so that's good. Uh, Zirkles also accepted the offer, so probably going to try and trade Subban now. Also, because of each signing uh, Hammonick and Alzner, I might even trade one of our young defensemen that haven't been growing, as there's really not a spot for them anymore. After signing Andrew Hammond, we really don't need Subban anymore. Uh, like I was saying, Morales down right now. He's an 81. I'm going to see if I can get a second round pick for him. He's also 26, so he's basically done growing. Uh, second round pick at this point would be very good. We'll see if Buffalo says yes, and they do, so that was a solid trade. So right here, guys, I'm trying to trade Larson to the LA Kings for a second round pick. After signing both Hamannick and Alzner, we had like 8 83-plus defensemen. Totally unnecessary. Uh, seven's fine. Start one in the AHL. When someone gets injured, call them up, and then basically just kind of rotate. Um, so a second round pick, I think, would be solid for Larson. We didn't give up anything for him. We signed him as a free agent. We'll see what they say. Trade accepted. So, I mean, we just added two second round picks for players that no longer had a spot on the team. I think that's uh, pretty solid moves. So, I was looking through the free agency again, guys, and I seen that this DeMeo guy is available. 21, 75 overall. That's pretty high overall for someone that's only 21. Medium bomb, 6. Uh, we have a couple of contract spots open now, so I'm going to give him an offer here. I think he could turn out to be a pretty solid, like, third or fourth line guy for us. So, we're at the start of the next season. Here's a look at the lines. They're looking a lot better than they were last season. Uh, Duran, Johnson, and Nylander on the first line. I actually made Nylander the right winger as his face-offs were the worst between him, Johnson, and Larkin. He's only got 71. I think he'll play really well there, though. Uh, Gregorenko, Larkin, and Andronov is the second line. Benson, Dreisel, Sherbach is the third line. So that's a really solid third line. Then Poirier, Grigginson, and Patrick's the fourth line. I think it's also a solid fourth line. Hopefully Patrick can actually still gain uh, overall there as he is a depth forward. So playing on the fourth line shouldn't really hurt him. Looking at the defense now, too, you can see we have Alzner and Hamnick as our two top pair defensemen. Uh, basically, just bought a top pair, which is kind of awesome. Provorov and Hannafin on the second pair, and then DeKaiser and Lodgren on the third. Uh, looking at goalies here, you can see we have Corpy Sala with Hammond backing him up. So, like I was saying, NHL team definitely looks a lot better. Uh, should do a lot better than they have the last couple seasons. Even the AHL team here, uh, Strom, Vlardy, and Artuka on the first line. Vlardy and Strom should be able to tear it up. Uh, DeMeo, Vegetamo, and Lind on the second Zirkles, Hintz, Tulola on the third, and then Kabitsky, Chittle, and Fogel on the fourth. Uh, defense here is pretty stacked here for the AHL. Wierenski's in the AHL right now. Like I was saying, we basically had a seventh guy. He's 83, so once someone's injured, he'll get called up. At that point, he can't get called down, so whenever somebody's injured, he'll be the guy that goes in, and then if no one's injured, unfortunately, he'll be scratched. But um, I think it's probably better than trading him. As then we, I mean, I still might trade him, honestly. We have pretty good depth there with Olas, who's an 81. This is the guy we just drafted. Um, I didn't realize it was an 81 already, so yeah, I might actually end up trading uh, Wierenski. Uh, Tulola there, Sean Day on the second pair. Sean Day is pretty good for only having 7th deep potential. Mikola and Niku. And then in goal, of course, we have Vava Linen. Still a 79. I'm hoping he can get to at least like an 82, be the backup maybe, take over for Hammond next season. And then Hallen in there could probably be the HL starter by next season. So like I was saying, both teams are looking very good right now. I'm going to show you guys the uh, ratings we have as well for next season. And also, I'll show you the awards. I haven't done that yet. So HL team here, 82 offense, 84 defense, 81 goaltending. NHL team, 94 offense, 90 defense, 92 goaltending. So a huge upgrade. I think our offense was like a 90 or 91 last year. The defense was less than 90 for sure. It was like 86, and the goaltending might have been like 91. Um, AHL team also like had way worse stats, like 70-something offense, like 81 defense, and obviously the same goaltending. So both teams look a lot better. Uh, another thing I forgot to show you guys at the start of this season was who the captains were. 
Uh, they changed a bit since the offseason, but I decided to make the captain uh, William Nylander. He's the best player on the team by far, so why not give him the C? Dreisaitl has been the A since like we took him. I made that trade for him, I should say. And then Hamannick there just gave the A. Big signing. One of, like the fir I think the first big time free agent to sign with us, so figured why not give him the A. He's also the best defenseman on our team. And like I was saying, guys, uh, before I end this episode, I want to show you the awards for last year. I'm wondering if Andronov maybe won the Calder. I don't think he had quite enough points, but you never know. If there wasn't any other good rookies, uh, maybe he could have got it. So, of course, we know the Stanley Cup champions there, Calgary Flames, President's Trophy, Washington Capitals, uh, Clarence Campbell, of course, Calgary, Prince of Wales, Columbus. Player awards here, Tarasenko with the Art Ross and the Hart. Klingberg with the James Norris, Tarasenko with the Lady Bing. Rusu actually got the Calder instead. Uh, Con Smythe, Gillies. I've, I don't even know who this guy is. I have no idea. Um, Andrew Hammond got the Conn Smythe last year. I totally forgot about that. It's so random. Uh, Vesna Borowski and the William M. Jennings. Uh, Bill Masterson, Emmelin, Selkie there to Bergeron, Ted Lindsay as well, Tarasenko, and the Marie Richard. Tarasenko had like five awards this year. Absolutely cleaned up. AHL team here. We won the Calder Cup. We also, I think, won our division. Let's see. Actually, we didn't win our... Oh, wait. Yeah, we won our oh, Western Conference playoffs. So we didn't actually win our division in the regular season. Of course, we came through in the playoffs. Player awards here. Let's see if we won any. Sorella got a bunch. Um, Johansson there. Hallinan. Um, that was a Calder Cup playoff MVP. Who, who is Hallinan? I honestly don't even recognize that name. I think he's like one of the... Oh, no. He's the AHL goalie. He's our backup AHL goalie, I think. Um, right, because Vavalainen got injured. So, obviously, he will be a good goalie, I think. Uh, he could be the AHL starter for sure once Vavalainen becomes a backup. Um, do we get any other awards? Logan Stanley got one there. Johnson got another. So, one player award there for the uh, Calder Cup MVP, but that's all right. Like I was saying, guys, I think our team has really turned around this offseason. Really excited to see what happens this season. I think we should be able to get back in the playoffs and uh, really, you know, make some noise. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.